Good day, learners. So, welcome back to my channel. For today, we will be discussing a different subject. This is a more advanced subject called auditing. So, for our first installment of the videos in this subject, we will be talking about overview of the audit process. So, dito sa video na to, i-explain ko ng very briefly ang lahat ng mga activities and considerations that the auditor should take into account when conducting an audit of the financial statements. So if you are ready to learn something new today, this video is for you. So welcome back guys. Tulad ng sinabi ko, we will be talking about overview of the audit process. So to start, you all know that the definition of auditing is the accumulation and evaluation of evidence about information to determine and report on the degree of correspondence between the information and established criteria. Auditing should be done by a competent, independent person. So take note of the highlighted words and phrases. Please take note that auditing involves accumulation and evaluation of evidence. So, hindi pwedeng walang evidence gathering dito sa audit. Also, at the end of the audit, we need to report. Report about what? Report about the degree of correspondence between the information, which is the financial statement, and the established criteria, which is in the Philippines, the PFRS. And lastly, you should be able to take note that Auditors should be competent and independent. Given this definition, there are four phases in an audit. So the audit process involves four phases. So the first phase is the pre-engagement activities. The second phase is the planning activity. Third phase is evidence gathering. And fourth phase is the reporting phase. So in this video, we will talk about each of these phases very, very concisely and briefly. So, we will start with pre-engagement activities. So, ano ba yung mga ginagawa during pre-engagement activities? In this phase, the question that we normally answer is, do we accept a client for a first-time client? Or, we also ask the question, do we continue a relationship with a client for recurring clients? So, in this activity or in this phase, there is a two-fold assessment. Assessment on the part of the auditor and assessment on the part of the client. So, on the part of the auditor, these are the things you, that you need to consider. First, are relevant ethical requirements satisfied? Specifically, two things. One is independence and number two is competence. Because sabi sa definition ng auditing, you cannot conduct an audit if you are not number one, independent, and number two, if you are not competent. Independence, rules, and safeguards are governed by the code of ethics, while competence can be related to the Philippine standards on quality control, to control the quality of the work of the auditor. So, yun yung first consideration on the part of the auditor. The second consideration is, are the characteristics of the engagement applicable? Or, does the engagement have this certain characteristics? There are five characteristics at ang mnemonics natin for this ay waras. What is WARAS? W is for written report. A is for appropriate subject matter. So if the financial statement is the subject matter, then most probably appropriate yun. R is there should be a rational purpose for the engagement. A, there should be an access to sufficient appropriate evidence because if in the first place you cannot have access to sufficient appropriate evidence, then it's better not to accept this engagement kasi magkakaroon lang din naman ng scope limitation. And S, suitable criteria. The criteria to be used should be suitable. Lastly, the auditor should be able to understand its responsibilities or the objectives of the audit. 
This is governed by PSA 200 and according sa PSA 200, dalawa lang yung objectives ng audit. Number one, to obtain reasonable assurance. Take note that hindi absolute assurance ang binibigay natin, kundi reasonable only. High but not absolute. Assurance about what? About whether the FS as a whole are free from material misstatement whether due to fraud or error. The second objective is to report on the financial statements and communicate it as required by the PSA. So take note, ito lang po yung mga responsibilities ng auditor at wala nang iba pa. On the part of the client naman, number one is we need to consider the integrity of management. Why is that? Because we don't want to associate ourselves with client whose management lacks integrity. So paano natin consider or ma-ascertain yung integrity ng management? Number one, what you can do is talk or communicate with the predecessor auditor or yung dating auditor. Um, you can ask questions like, bakit nag-stop yung relationship nila as auditor and client and what were the reasons? And you can also ask if there were misunderstanding between the auditor and management. So you need to communicate with the predecessor auditor. One thing to consider here is you should first obtain the consent of the management before ka makakapag-communicate with the predecessor auditor. If you cannot communicate with the predecessor auditor, you can also go check other relevant source of information like um, website, news articles, or something like that. Second consideration is dapat klaro sa management yung kanilang mga responsibilities. Technically, meron silang apat na responsibilities at ang mnemonics natin ay PEPU. P for they are responsible for the preparation of the financial statements. E, they are responsible for establishing and maintaining internal control. P, they are responsible to provide access to all information. And you, they need to give us unrestricted access to persons within the entity. So if any of this, hindi nila kayang um, itake responsibility, then that is um, a consideration before you accept or continue a relationship with a client. So if klaro sa part ng auditor yung mga responsibilities niya at klaro din sa management or sa client yung kanyang mga responsibilities, then we now have a common understanding or agreement with the terms of the engagement. Normally, we document the understanding or the agreement in an audit engagement letter. So you might ask, ano yung mga contents ng audit engagement letters? Normally, may six tayong content and ang mnemonics natin ay RORARO. So what is RORARO? R is for the responsibilities of the auditor as what was mentioned kanina. O is the objective and scope of the audit. R, we should list down the responsibilities of management, yung apat, yung PEPU. A, we should also consider the applicable financial reporting framework which is in the Philippines, the PFRS. R, we should also explain the expected form and content of the reports and o other relevant information such as mga audit fee, mga billing information, or other relevant information. So that's it for pre-engagement activities. So after you do the pre-engagement activity, the second phase is the planning activities. So in this phase, Sabi nga nila, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So, bakit ba tayo nagpa-plan sa audit? So, there are three purposes for planning an audit. Number one is to enable the auditor to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. Number two, to help keep audit costs reasonable kasi nga kapag hindi ka nakapagplano ng maayos, you might be inefficient and it might balloon or bubble up the audit costs. And number three, to avoid misunderstandings with the client. So, dapat sa simula pa lang, klaro na with you and the client para hindi kayo magkaroon ng misunderstandings. So, in the planning activity, ang goal talaga natin dito is to establish overall audit strategy and develop an audit plan. So, mamaya, we will discuss anong kaibahan ng dalawa. Okay, and... 
the nature and the extent of planning activity will vary depending on number one, the size and complexity of entity. So, syempre, if the entity or your client is uh, bigger or more complex yung business niya, then uh, magvavary talaga yung plan. And then, depending also on previous experience. So, planning will be a lot easier if this is a recurring audit and changes in circumstances. So, kapag may mga nagbabagong circumstances along the way, then it might affect the planning activity. So, there are four main activities in this phase. No? Ang mnemonics natin, U, PAN. So, what are these four main activities? U is for understand the business and industry, including its internal control. So, you understand the business itself, its external environment, and its internal control. P is to perform preliminary analytical procedures. A is to assess risks and set materiality. And B is for develop overall audit strategy and audit plan. So, titingnan natin isa-isa yung apat na procedures na yan. So, let's start with understanding the business and the industry, including its internal control. Why do we do this? We do this, the understanding of the business and industry, including its internal control because it affects the business risk and the risk of material misstatement. So, the business risk is the risk that the client will fail to meet its objectives. So, take note that if your client will fail to meet its objectives, then baka most probably that is a going concern problem. So, kailangan natin intindihin yung business niya at yung industry niya for us to be able to take note of the business risk. And of course, the more important thing is for us to be able to determine the risk of material misstatement or the risk na merong mga misstatements that are material in the financial statements. Yung risk of material misstatement can be further subclassified into two, yung inherent risk tsaka yung control risk. Inherent risk is the risk na may misstatement before consideration of control or internal control, while control risk is the risk na merong misstatement given na na-consider na natin yung internal control ng business. So, what are the things that we need to understand? There are six things that you need to understand, and the mnemonics is IBM, IMO. So, I is for the industry and external environment. Industry, um, how does it fare along with its competitors sa industry, external environment such as regulation, and things like that. Suppliers, information, customer, ganun. Business operations and processes. So, we should understand how it works, what are the processes, ano yung mga transaction cycles niya. Okay? M is for management and governance. So, we should also understand the way the company is governed and ano yung management um, organization structure niya. We should also understand its internal control but only those that are relevant to financial reporting. You don't have to understand everything. You only have to understand those internal control na relevant sa financial reporting. Why? Because ang goal ng internal control is to make things efficient. So kapag merong magandang internal control, most probably yung financial statements maayos din or lesser na yung material misstatements. So we only consider internal control that are relevant to financial statements. M is for measurement and performance. How do they measure um, their key ratios or key performance indicators? And letter O, objectives and strategies. Ano yung objectives niya? How do they um, achieve those objectives? So number two activity is to perform, take note, preliminary analytical procedures. So ano ba tong mga analytical procedures? Okay, so we do this to better understand the client's business and to assess client business risk. So doon sa kanina, we already understood the business and the industry and its internal control. Pero to further understand that, we perform preliminary analytical procedures. There are five types. Number one, we can compare our data to industry data. So for example, meron kang um, profit margin. So, kung ano yung profit margin mo, i-compare mo sa industry average. So, baka naman 
mababa masyado yung sayo or mataas masyado sayo. Kung mababa masyado sayo, you might not be doing well as a business. So that is a business risk. Pero pag masyado namang mataas sayo compared to the others, so parang medyo there's something fishy, no? So baka merong fraud na nangyayari. So yun yung first na pwede nyong gawin for analytical procedure. Number two is horizontal analysis or you compare your data this year with prior period data. Or the other term for this is trend analysis. Number three, you can do vertical analysis or yung tinatawag nilang common size financial statements. You compare one item with a certain item in the same financial statement. Number four is we can compute for financial ratios, mga current ratio, mga total assets to equity, mga ganun. Um, so that we can see if the business is doing well or to better understand the performance of the business. Finally, we can use non-financial data. So for example, you are your client is a hotel, so you can use, yung, for example, the number of rooms or the square uh, meter or the area para estimate yung revenue or certain expenses. So we can also use non-financial data to perform analytical procedures. So according sa PSA 520, three times natin ginagawa ang analytical procedures. We do it first during the planning phase. Second, during evidence gathering. And third, during the reporting phase. Among these three phases, during planning required na mag-analytical procedures and during reporting required din mag-analytical procedure. Therefore, during evidence gathering, hindi siya required. Optional lang yung analytical procedure. So take note of the purposes. Nag-iiba yung purpose ng analytical procedure depende sa kung kailan mo siya ginagawa. During the planning phase, ang primary purpose na ito understand the business and the industry and to indicate possible misstatement. Yun na nga sinasabi ko kanina, baka masyadong mataas yung ratio mo or masyadong mataas yung iyong um, ratio compared to the industry average that might indicate possible misstatement. While your secondary purposes are to assess the going concern and to reduce detailed tests. During evidence gathering, your primary purpose is to reduce detailed tests. Some items kasi pwede ng analytical procedures lang, hindi na masyadong detailed. For example, rent expense. So pwede nang i-audit yung rent expense using just analytical procedure at wala nang ibang um, detailed tests. So that is the primary goal of analytical procedure during evidence gathering. The secondary um, purpose is to indicate possible misstatement. While during reporting phase, ang primary purpose ng analytical procedure is to indicate possible misstatement. After auditing, gagawa ka ng analytical procedures if things make sense. Baka may mga bagay that don't make sense, so th this might be an indication of misstatements. And the secondary purpose is to assess going concerns. Since later, I will tell you that meron ng separate um, heading for going concerns sa ating audit report. So the third activity under planning is to assess risks and set materiality. So you all know that the audit risk model is audit risk is equal to inherent risk times control risk times detection risk. We will take a look at each of these risks. Detection risk or the one that you cannot control. So yung audit risk should always be low. Low dapat ang audit risk. You want to maintain it at a low level. Inherent risk and control risk, nakadepende yan dun sa understanding na ginawa mo. So detection risk is the one that is computed or one that the auditor has no control with. So detection risk is the risk that the audit evidence for an audit objective will fail to detect misstatements exceeding performance materiality. Or in other words, this is room for mistake. So kapag mababa ang detection risk, meaning konti lang yung pwedeng hindi mo ma-detect na mali. Okay? So, konti lang yung pwede mong room for mistake or yung hindi mo ma-detect. So, that is detection risk. Inherent risk measures the auditor's assessment of the susceptibility of an assertion to material misstatement before considering the effectiveness of related internal control. 
So without the consideration of internal control, is this item susceptible to misstatement? If yes, then mataas yung inherent risk niya. While control risk is the risk that a material misstatement could occur and not be prevented or detected by the client's internal control. So kahit may internal control na, may mga misstatement na hindi pa rin mapiprevent or madedetect ng mga internal control. So kapag maraming ganun, then your control risk should be high. While the audit risk is the risk that auditor expresses an inappropriate opinion when the financial statements are materially misstatement, meaning may mali sa financial statements or may misstatements sa financial statements. Then, ang binigay mong opinion is walang misstatements. So, ayaw mong mangyari yun because people or the stakeholders will rely on your audit report. Tapos, meron palang misstatements, sinabi mo wala. So, yun yung ayaw mong mangyari, which is the audit risk. And you want to maintain this audit risk at a low level. The materiality is the magnitude of an omission or misstatement of accounting information that makes it probable that the judgment of a reasonable person relying on the information would have been changed or influenced by the omission or misstatement. Or in other words, affected ba or malaki ba yung effect ng isang misstatement na to sa decision making ng isang reasonable stakeholder. So if yes, then that is material. Depende yan sa size and sa nature ng item na yun. You can also consider fraud risks in accordance with PSA 240 and you can also consider non-compliance in accordance with PSA 250. So the last activity under planning activities is the developing overall audit strategy. So, ano ba tong overall audit strategy? It contains the scope, timing, and direction of the audit or STD. Specifically, ano yung mga pasok dyan? Scope of the engagement, nature and timing of reports, factors significant in directing efforts, results of preliminary engagement activities, resources necessary like manpower, competence ng mga members mo, kailangan nyo ba ng auditor's expert, yung time ng audit, or even costs. So, nandyan yan lahat. This overall audit strategy should be in the form of a memorandum. Okay? So, in the form of a memorandum. The second thing that you need to complete after the planning activity is the audit plan. The audit plan contains the following procedures. Meron tayong risk assessment procedures at meron tayong further audit procedures. Further audit procedures is further subdivided into four. We have test of controls. We have substantive test of transactions. We have test of details of balances. And we have the substantive analytical procedures. While yung overall audit strategy ay in the form of a memorandum, ang audit plan ay in the form of a checklist. Ang dating pangalan ng audit plan ay audit program. So, etong mga activities or etong mga planned procedures, these are um, cross-tabulated with the seven types of evidence or eto yung tinatawag kong RIO-RICA. So, R is for re-performance, I for inspection, O for observation, R for recalculation, I for inquiry, C for confirmation, and A for analytical procedure. So let's cross-tabulate anong mga evidences ang pwede for a certain type of procedure. So for risk assessment, apat lang out of the seven ang pwede mong gawin, which are inspection, observation, inquiry, and analytical procedure. Sa test of control naman, apat din ang pwede mong gawin, which are re-performance, inspection, observation, and inquiry. For test of transactions, you also have for re-performance, inspection, recalculation, and inquiry. For test of details of balances, we have re-performance, inspection, 
recalculation, inquiry, and confirmation. While for analytical procedure, you can only do inquiry and analytical procedure. So, you are done with planning activity if nagawa mo na yung overall audit strategy at yung audit plan. Take note that planning is iterative and a continual process, meaning kahit technically tapos na yung planning, even though nasa evidence gathering phase ka na or sa reporting phase, your plan may change depending on changes in circumstances or changes in your previous understanding or initial understanding. So, pwedeng i-amend yung audit plan. So, the third phase is evidence gathering. So, under evidence gathering, these are your sources of evidence, the audit procedures performed. So, depende kung ano yung pinerforma na audit procedures. This is your main source of evidence. Number two, pwede ring maging source yung previous audit. Pwede ring maging source yung quality control procedures, the accounting records of the entity, information from management's expert, and absence of information is a source of information. So always remember that when you do audit procedures, you need to relate them to assertions. These are the five broad classification of assertions. We have occurrence and existence, completeness, valuation, allocation, rights and obligation, and presentation and disclosure. But to be specific, depende sa procedure mo, meron ding um, specific assertions for them. So for example, if your procedure is test of transactions, chine-check mo ay transaction, not balances, there are what we call transaction-related assertions. So we have occurrence, completeness, accuracy, cut-off, classifications. Occurrence meaning nangyari ba yung transaction. Completeness meaning kompleto ba ang na-record na transaction. Accuracy is in terms of its amount. Cut off meaning was it recorded in the proper period? Classification is sa tamang account ba siya ni record? If you are doing substantive test of detailed balances, test of detail of balances, so ang, ang in-audit mo is ending balances or beginning balances, then you have balance-related assertions. We have existence. Yung ending balance ba, for example, yung cash balance ending is 100,000, does it really exist? Rights and obligation, may right ka ba over that asset? Or for that liability, ikaw ba talaga yung may obligation? Completeness, meaning um, kompleto ba yung lahat na mga pwedeng idagdag dun sa balance na yon ay nadagdag sa balance na yon Valuation and allocation in terms of the amount. Tama ba yung value niya? Is it um, recorded or valued depende on the PFRS or based on PFRS? Allocation meaning um, for depreciation, tama ba yung computation ng depreciation? Or for um, intangibles, tama ba ang pag-compute ng amortization? And then we have this presentation and disclosure related assertions. So we have occurrence and rights and obligations, completeness, accuracy and valuation, and classification and understandability. So dapat bawat procedure should be related or should be um, matched with a certain assertion. So meron kang assertion or your objective, tapos meron kang procedure to address that certain assertion or objective. So, what are your strategies in evidence gathering? Pwede kang test of control at the same time substantive procedure. Why do you do that in certain cases? You do this to confirm your initial understanding that controls are working effectively. So, for example, during planning, nalaman mo na it seems like controls are working effectively. So, you need to do test of controls to test if it's really working effectively. Kasi, if you do that, you further reduce control risk. Thus, when you further reduce control risk, you will increase, increase your planned detection risk. 
and thus you decrease your nature and timing and extent of substantive procedure. So maganda kung meron kang test of control kasi pwede niyang bawasan yung iyong substantive procedures. Pero kung ayaw mo mag-POC or from your planning or understanding phase, you, it seems like you understood that the controls are not working effectively, then you do not carry out test of control and you prepare substantive procedure only. So in this case, you can do a combination of test of transactions, test of details of balances, or substantive analytical procedures. So what is the nature, timing, and extent of audit procedure? Depende yan kung test of controls or substantive test. For test of controls, apat lang, don't forget. Ito lang yung pwede mong gawin. Re-performance, inquiry, observation, and inspection. That is for the nature. Well, for substantive tests, any of the seven pwede mong gawin. For the timing, you can choose either year-end or interim audit. And for the extent, you determine the sample size and the items to select. When you select items, you can do it either using 100% audit, um, sampling, meaning random kapipili ng kung ilan man yung sample size mo, or choose specific items or select specific items because meron kang gustong um, tingnan dun sa mga specific items na yun. When do you stop gathering evidence? When you are convinced na meron ka ng sufficient appropriate evidence. This is a matter of professional judgment and this is influenced by the following. The significance of the misstatement in the assertion, likelihood of a material effect, effectiveness of management's responses to risks, experience during previous audit, source and reliability of available information, persuasiveness of evidence, and understanding of entity environment and internal control. What if, for example, hindi ka naka-achieve or hindi mo na-reach ang sufficient appropriate evidence kahit na trinay mo talagang makapag-achieve ng sufficient appropriate evidence? Bakit hindi mo na-achieve? Because the management is imposing certain limitations. Hindi mo pwede tingnan to, hindi mo pwede tingnan to. Then in that case, meron tayong tinatawag na scope limitation. Okay? So pag meron kang scope limitation, there is an effect on your audit report. So in the reporting phase, there are four different types of opinion. We have unqualified, meaning walang material misstatement or kung meron man, immaterial sila. Qualified, adverse, and disclaimer. So question is, Sir, kailan siya qualified, adverse, at disclaimer? So we will just remember this table. So if there is a material misstatement and the misstatement is material only, then the appropriate opinion is qualified. But if the misstatement is material and pervasive, meaning ang effect ng misstatement is um, it affects many accounts or many balances sa financial statements, then your opinion should be adverse. Take note, the assumption sa material misstatement ay nakagather ka ng sufficient appropriate evidence. Dito naman sa scope limitation, ang assumption is hindi ka nakagather ng sufficient appropriate evidence. So if there is a scope limitation, then material yung scope limitation, then yung opinion mo is qualified. But if the scope limitation is so pervasive, then the appropriate opinion is now disclaimer. There is a new format for the audit report. Medyo mas mahaba na yung audit report. And these are the contents. First, the title. It should bear the term independent. So independent auditor's report. Next, the appropriate addressee. Normally, the shareholders, pero pwede rin yung management, yung maging addressee. Then, the first paragraph is the opinion, followed by the basis for opinion. And then, we have the key audit matters, which is governed by PSA 701. This is only required for publicly listed entities. Ano yung mga pwedeng ilagay sa key audit matters? Yung mga significant complex matters like new standards or um, updates in the standards. Then we have a separate paragraph for going concern only when material uncertainty exists. So kapag merong material uncertainty about going concern and the company 
disclose that in the notes to the FS, kailangan ilalagay mo rin sa audit report mo na merong material uncertainty about going concern. What if hindi nila dinisclose na merong material uncertainty about going concern? Then an effect niya ay sa opinion. Baka pwedeng um, adverse or qualified yung ating opinion. And then we have a separate paragraph for other information governed by PSA 720 revised. And then we have responsibilities for the financial statements. Take note, hindi na lang management but also kasali na dyan ang those charged with governance. Then the auditor's responsibilities and the last paragraph ay other reporting responsibilities from other regulatory um, agencies. For example, in the Philippines, merong mga requirements ang BIR to report sa auditor's report. And then, meron ng requirement ngayon that there should be a mention of the name of the engagement partner. But this is only required for publicly listed entities. So that's all. Again, take note that there are four phases. Pre-engagement, planning, evidence gathering, and reporting. So thank you very much for listening and watching this video. If you have questions, you may message me in my social media accounts or you may comment down below for any questions. Again, if hindi ka pa nakaka-subscribe, please subscribe to my channels. Like, comment, share this video para mas marami ang makanood sa video. I-hit mo na rin ang notification bell para ma-notify ka if meron tayong mga bagong videos. So that would be all for today and see you on my next video. Bye!